Hello and welcome to the Adelaide Development Update for February 2022. My name is Norman Hackenberg and I will be taking you through some of the developments that have been happening in Adelaide and across South Australia. Uh, I'll be taking you through some of the uh, developments in housing and also in infrastructure that have been happening over the last couple of uh, months and we'll get an update of what's happening at the moment. So just a bit of an introduction to what we're going to be discussing today. So I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction about myself, uh, who I am and what uh, what my role is. And uh, then we'll head straight into the latest development news, the latest infrastructure news, and then we'll discuss some of the upcoming videos and things that will be coming up in the next couple of months, not only on this channel, but also in the development of Adelaide. So a little bit about myself, my name is Norman Hackenberg. I've recently completed a Bachelor of Urban and Regional Planning, and I've also completed a thesis on the Seaford and Flinders lines and how the electrification has changed housing around the line and so forth, and also how it's affected the patronage and development patterns. Uh, so my interests are in development and infrastructure, specifically related to strategic infrastructure and planning. I am a contributor with Sensation Adelaide and also a regular contributor to Wikipedia, uh, mainly focusing on infrastructure and you know taking all those photos of all those train stations you've probably seen around the place. So those are the main things I have an interest in. So let's go ahead and check out the latest development updates for Adelaide. So the three main developments I wanted to cover today uh, in regards to Adelaide are, uh, first of all, the um, Aboriginal Cultural Centre that was uh, planned for Lot 14. Uh, it's now been given a name of Tarkari and it's due to open in about 2025. So um, this development has been designed by Woods Baggett and DSNR. And it's a quite very, very spectacular design. It's uh, going to be a real gem in um, the Adelaide uh, parklands there in uh, on the old um, Royal Adelaide Hospital. So very much looking forward to that getting underway. Uh, we've also got a lodgement in the planning system for the Dominator building, the Dominator development. Now, the significance of this development is that it will be the new tallest building in Adelaide, standing at 180 metres. Uh, it will be 55 storeys in total with 322 dwellings, three restaurants and 160 accommodation rooms in the hotel. Now, um, again, this will be the tallest building in Adelaide if it is constructed and it will make a real impact to the skyline uh, from so many angles, um, it's going to be quite an amazing development to follow over the next couple of months and possibly even years. And finally, we've also uh, seen the Festival Tower finally commence at Festival Plaza, um, standing right between uh, the Adelaide Railway Station and the um, new Festival Plaza and Parliament House. So. Uh, that's going to be quite a significant development underway in a very, very prominent location. Now, that development is uh, designed by JPW and is being developed by Walker Corporation. Uh, again, you can see a little image there on the right hand side of how it will look. Um, it does look very, very plain in the renders. However, it's going to be interesting to see what materials they will use because they will really make or break this building. Um, as it develops. So really looking forward to seeing that one go up over the next year or so. So one of the buildings I wanted to discuss first is the Festival Plaza, which is currently under construction. And part of the construction is also the Festival Tower, which is shown there in that photo on that main slide. And we'll just go through a couple of photos which were taken last weekend. So the first photo just on your left there shows the plaza under construction and some of the um, 
tree um, structures that are being put into the plaza to provide shade. And one of the noticeable things you can also see in that photo are the very recent developments, very recent and tall developments. So you can see there the switch building realm, for, um, the building on and the buildings on Frome Street as well, the uh, Crown Plaza and the student accommodation block. In the middle, you can see the first few floors of the festival uh, tower going up. And you can see uh, that's very much under construction at the moment. And again, to the right, you can see some of those tree structures I mentioned before that are part of the uh, festival plaza. Okay, so on this next set of images here, we've got uh, some sort of a beehive structure which looks quite interesting. Now, um, it does feature some sort of a lift inside. As far as I could tell, I wasn't able to have a clear look at it, um, but I believe it may be access to either the festival center or the car park or possibly even both. So that's gonna be something to find out. If you do know, please write it in the comments below uh, and I'll uh, otherwise I'll have to just follow that up and see what I can find so again it's a very interesting looking structure um, and it just cut, features that design you can see on the festival plaza itself um, in the middle we've got the um, plaza sort of heading towards more the uh, Sky City Adelaide and uh, Adelaide Convention Center building which uh, yeah it's um, all connecting up along the, the uh, river bank there which is Great to see, lots of, lots of connectivity, which is fantastic. And just on the right hand side there, you've got the entrance towards the festival center. Um, and uh, again, it features a bit of a plaza outside with some seating and some greenery. Now greenery is very important, obviously, in this area because of the fact that it is a lot of concrete in this area. So the more greenery, the better it is. Um, and we'll see how that all develops over the next couple of months. So great to see some real progress now happening on that Festival Plaza site. And also uh, new accesses towards the Festival Center complex. A couple more images there. You've got some greenery towards the King William Street side of things. I believe the jacaranda trees on the left there, um, as long as with some grass and other landscaping features. In the middle, you've got the entrance to the festival uh, center and you've got a indigenous uh, artwork there in the middle um, still all being completed as we speak and on the right hand side you've got the entrance to the festival uh, theater with the big led screen so you can see along king william street heading towards north adelaide and it just has some advertisements on there currently for the festival which is coming up in the next couple of weeks. And on these last set of images here, we've got some of the um, wall that's going to be covering um, the grassy area. And that will what, what that is what's going to be facing King William Street. Um, and then in the middle, you've got the entrance to the car park. Again, a few sort of masonry architectural features which are quite good looking and on the right hand side you can see the stairs leading up to Festival Plaza heading up from King William Street. And just as a last photo there I've got uh, the architectural trees or tree-like structures on the plaza uh, just right in front of the new Sky City extension there and the railway station just to give a bit of an overview of how this, this will look once it's all completed, a bit of a bit of a preview there. So it's think I think it's going to be very interesting to see how they finalise everything and how much of that greenery actually extends the whole pla across the whole plaza. So that's one to watch out for in the next couple of weeks as this development um, continues to be finalised. The next building I wanted to discuss, or the next development I wanted to discuss, was the old Southern Cross Arcade building which was located on King William Street, just near Rundle Mall. So uh, Cox Architecture has architecturally designed this building 
um, and it's being developed by Charter Hall. This will house uh, some major public sector um, organisations. I believe it's um, Services Australia at this stage and some other businesses. It's got a huge floor plate, this building, um, and also house some retail, in, uh, high end retail. So, again, not sure what uh, retail um, partners will be part of this one, but that's uh, going to be revealed in the next couple of months, I'm sure, as this building progresses. So, we'll just go through a couple of photos on the next slide. Okay, and here we see the uh, photo from just about a week ago. You can see that the core with the Charter Hall branding slowly uh, going up there at the development. And you can also see the surround slowly taking shape as well. On just the right hand side there, you can see the heritage listed facade, which is from the Sands McDougall building, I believe. And that will be part of the final structure, which is great to see that being incorporated into the building. And now moving on to the next building, the next development, it's 83 Peary Street, also in the city of Adelaide. Now this one was designed by Woods Backett, and this one will house mainly the Department for Infrastructure and Transport. Now this building has been under construction for quite some time, so so this building is very much close to topping out at this point in time. So I've just got a few angles from Peary Street and also Gawler Place. So um, the leftmost photo shows how this building will look from, uh, looking west from Peary Street. Um, you can see the crane is uh, very close to the top of the building, so it's very, very close to topping out. Uh, in the middle, you've got a view from the intersection of Peary Street and King William Street. So you can see how this will look from the tram stop. And the rightmost photo shows the building and how it looks from Gawler Place. So it's making a huge impact, especially if you're viewing, viewing this uh, from uh, Curry Street and Grenfell Street. And in these two photos here, you can see a bit more of a detailed view across the building, especially those windows, which are quite have quite a bit interesting pattern. So the first one is very much a close up to see the, the different angles of the um, windows as it progresses along the facade. And the second one is just a bit, bit pulled back so you can see more of that building there. Okay, the next one is 72 Wide Street, which is being developed by Centuria. Now, this is a very much a smaller development, but it's very much in the vicinity of the Peary Street development that we just discussed. And it's going to be replacing a very ugly frontage, which was this one here. So you can see the Wilson Car Park there along the street, 72 Wide Street. Again, it's going to be a welcome change to not see this um, this facade of the parking uh, garage. So it's gonna be great to have a bit more of a office type uh, structure there to look at from Wide Street. And you can obviously see in these two photos here that there's a lot of excavation happening, especially in that right photo there, it goes quite deep. So yeah, very much under construction at the moment, this development. Okay, and uh, now we're going to move on to the Adelaide GPO, which is also known as the Western Hotel Development. This is uh, designed by Hassel and is being developed by Grayton, which have also uh, developed other developments in the area, such as the um, apartments along Franklin Street and uh, a few other developments around the city. So we'll just now obviously the GPO is a very much um, is a historically significant kind of building. So uh, what I've got here from the development application is the de uh, demolition plan. So at the moment, the main thing that's happening is the demolition of the rear building. And you can see there in the red in, in is what's actually going to be de demolished. So the actual extent of the demolition is very small. And it only covers some of the recent, more recent additions to that structure. 
um, and I'll just show you now how this looks. Uh, you've got there um, how it's all started, probably be about mid-December. And you can see that, that uh, how they're demolishing it. And just the sheer amount of concrete in this building. And this is how it looks now. So it's very much all being cleared up. And uh, they are preparing the site now for construction to build that hotel, which will be a great addition as well. Now, just some infrastructure news as well. Uh, we've got a couple of announcements that have come through recently. We've got the Gula Rail electrification project, uh, again, delayed until approximately April 2022 this year. So this has been a very, very long winding saga. Uh, electrification was due to be completed over a year ago and it's still going. So unfortunately, the whole line is still closed, but we're very hopeful that it will be finalized towards April this year, which will be great. And we'll have hopefully have some more um, and better connections to the northern suburbs of Adelaide. The next project is the Fleury Connection project, which covers both the Victor Harbour Road duplication between Seaford and uh, McLaren Vale, and also the section of Main South Road from uh, Seaford all the way down to Aldinga and Selix Beach. Now, um, construction of the first part, which is the Victor, Victor Harbour Road duplication, has now commenced. And uh, we'll get some updates hopefully on that uh, soon to see what's actually happening on site. And the other big news, obviously, uh, has been the outback infrastructure damage over the last, over the course of January, which has cut off a lot of transport routes to the um, north and west of South Australia and also Western Australia and the Northern Territory. So there's quite a bit of fixing happening there. And uh, one of the other things that has also recently started is the next stage of the Riverbank to Market Link, which is currently um, the Bentham Street part of the project. So that will get underway, well, already has started to get underway, which is great to see. Um, and then the remaining Pitt Street uh, project will hopefully not be too far away after that. Now, just coming in uh, 2022, a couple of things. So we'll just cover off, first of all, some of the videos I'll be doing. Um, obviously, some of you might have already seen some of the road uh, videos that I've done, which sort of points out different features of projects and how they're progressing. Now, um, I will be doing another update of Flagstaff Road because there has been a traffic switch over the last couple of weeks to switch to the new road surface and the new road uh, line up the hill, which is great to see. So the duplication is very much on track. We'll have another update from the Port Rush and McGill Road intersection uh, down in the eastern suburbs. I'm going to do another north-south corridor in full in the next couple of weeks, probably around um, Easter time, if not earlier. Uh, that's going to take a long time because it's about an hour long trip, but obviously I'll speed it up for you all and make sure it's nice and compact so you can see all the changes that have been happening over the last two years. And finally, I'm also planning to head up to Port Wakefield to look at the highway upgrade there. So that's going to be very interesting as well. Uh, obviously, the bridge over uh, what used to be Crash Corner is now completed. Um, they're just working on doing the final road duplication. Uh, the duplication through the town centre and some other final bits around the place, plus obviously the landscaping that will also take some time as well. Some upcoming events that will be uh, covered um, either through this channel or through obviously Sensational Adelaide and all those uh, forums. Uh, so we'll have the Dorminator design reveal and hopefully we'll find out what the actual name of it uh, will be. We've also got the Gawler Line elect, um, electrification project finishing soon, and hopefully the line will reopen not too far. Yeah, that's hopefully not too far away as well. We've got the state election in March 2022, so that's only just over a month away, and we'll have to wait and see what the policies are from both parties. At, the, at this stage, there's not much 
there in terms of infrastructure and development and planning. So we'll see what happens there. And of course, we'll have the federal election as well coming up in the next couple of months as well. So yeah, that's about it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did like it, please like it and subscribe. And if you didn't like it, well, uh, if you can leave some feedback, that'd be fantastic. Um, again, this is the first time that I've done this and uh, any feedback is much appreciated. You know, things like, you know, was it a little bit too boring? Do you want to have great bigger photos? Do you want to have um, more videos in, in there? Just give me some feedback and uh, I'll see what I can do. I'll try my best to uh, make it the best updates possible. So, um, yeah, and if, if you can also share it with your friends who are also interested in uh, development infrastructure in South Australia and Adelaide specifically. That'd be fantastic. And uh, yeah, I'll hope I will we'll see you soon in the next one. Bye bye for now.